16-bit color, why it matters, why it's different from 12-bit and even 14-bit color, and also how do you actually go about editing 16-bit color images. We've been taking the Hasselblad X2D2 all around New York to really test out its capabilities, and last week I had it up in upstate New York doing some landscape photography. But first off, what exactly is 16-bit color? And color depth in general is a measurement of how much color information is stored in each individual pixel. So having a higher color bit depth means that you'll have a ton more information. And to put that into numbers terms, if we have a 14-bit image, that is around 16,000 colors per channel or around 4 trillion colors in total versus 16-bit color, which is around 65,000 colors per channel or around 281 trillion colors total. But how exactly does that affect your end result photo? The more information that you have, essentially the better your photo is going to be because you have so much color individually in those pixels, which means that more information, more information to work with in post-processing, more subtle shifts in the colors in your image, more true to life it looks, and you also get smoother color gradients as well as better shadow and highlight detail. And Hasselblad, of course, is known for their incredible color science, the Hasselblad Natural Color Solution that is in the Hasselblad X2D2 that we've been using. And mix that with 16-bit color means that you're just going to get incredible results. One thing to note when you're using 16-bit color, more information means a larger file size. So it's nice to also have the option to switch to 14-bit in the Hasselblad camera should you not want to use the 16-bit colors. Let's say you're photographing something where you just need to take a ton of photos but don't necessarily need all that color information. That's where that would really come into handy. We've been shooting entirely in RAW using the Hasselblad to take full information out of that 100 megapixel medium format sensor. And to edit these photos, you can use Hasselblad's proprietary focus software or you could use Adobe Lightroom, for example. Today, I'm gonna to be using Lightroom. And I've got a few images selected here. So let's go through some of the differences in editing a 16-bit image and some of the advantages in real time as we're looking at it here. So let's go in. So to start off, we've got this New York City scene. This was taken on top of the edge. And I just love New York City at night is just one of them. It's, it just looks magical, honestly. You got all the lights on. It looks like a city that never sleeps. So first things first, you can already see just how much detail is in this image. And this was taken at 800 ISO towards the darker time of day. And there's really no, not much noise in this image, which is very impressive. And I could almost see people in the World Trade Center, which is so, so far away from where we were standing. So to start, I'm gonna bring up the exposure just a bit here because it is on the darker side. Then I'm gonna bring down the highlights to sort of save some of the information in all of the lights in the city. And you can just see just how much information is there to work with in general. When you've got a very dark sky and then you've got these very bright lights in the building, it can be kind of hard to balance those. So having all of that dynamic range means that you could easily balance them with the X2D2. And then I'm gonna bring up the shadows just a little bit here. Also to pull out a bit of the sky here, the sunset was like near pink. I'm just gonna bring up the dehaze slider just slightly and then bring up our vibrance as well. Talk about take advantage of all that color information. What better way than pulling up the vibrance? You could already see some of the colors that we're getting out of here. Oh, look, it's the Statue of Liberty. And coming down to the HSL slider, this is where you really notice some of the big differences, especially with 16-bit color, because you can play with these sliders a little too much. Um, and I'm gonna make some light adjustments here right now, starting with the hue. I'm just gonna bring the manual denoise slider up a bit just to smooth out a little bit of those, of that background noise. What I love about these Hasselblad photos is just how much fun you can kind of have with the crops. If I wanted to go for that panoramic crop, it already, I mean, that just looks awesome as it is, but it really feels like you can pull out multiple photos from one image. Like that just looks really cool too. Then I'm gonna have a little fun with the masking tools real quick to just pull out some of the areas that I wanna highlight here. So I'll do a little radial gradient just around World Trade Center there, kind of brighten it up. I'm actually gonna expand this just slightly, maybe warm it up just a little bit. And then also use the brush tool. Let's see if 
how this will look if we bring up some of the Hudson River there. Super subtle. I'm gonna select the sky real quick. Bring out some of the contrast there. Then I'm bringing down the luminance on the blues just to make the blue channel a little bit more rich in color rather than kind of leaning towards aqua-ish. I think this edit is giving New York City, so I'm pretty stoked about it. And I think that's pretty much all I would do to this photo. And honestly, I might crop the bottom here because I do like a little bit more of a panorama aspect ratio. I think that's fun. If I was trying to get a little crazy with the masks here, I probably could add a little bit more emphasis on certain aspects of the image so that the viewer's eye will kind of make its way towards the World Trade Center there. And adding that sort of contrast in the image just makes it look all the more better and also, again, helps viewers to kind of guide their way through an image. And so you could tell just looking at this image just how much color information is if you zoom in everywhere. There is just so one so much detail from that 100 megapixel sensor, but also you can notice just how smooth the difference between each color pixel is in this image beyond just the sheer detail out of the sensor. Moving on to our second image, completely different, not a New York City scene. Now we are moving into the woods. And I really like this scene because we've got the trees kind of framing this pathway and also um, a little kind of seat that looks really old on the, on the right there. It just it looks very dramatic. And it was a relatively overcast day, but there's a ton of color here. Shooting in raw means that it's going to look relatively flat out of camera. So let's see what we can pull out of this image. First things first, I'm gonna bring down the exposure just slightly. I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast. I tend to like a photo like this a little bit on the darker side, those sort of moody days, um, especially with the foliage kind of hewing a little bit darker, just feels more moody and dramatic. And the highlights I'm gonna bring down as well. I say I'm bringing down the exposure, but if I hit Option or Alt, I can check if my photo is being underexposed in certain areas and overexposed in other areas as well. I'm gonna bring up the texture just slightly to bring out the leaves. However, I don't want it to look unnatural, so I'm gonna bring down the clarity a bit. I sort of like bringing down the clarity on a scene like this with a lot of branches, because it just helps to make it look a little bit more ethereal rather than busy with all the branches. And then I'll bring up the dehaze just slightly. Now let's jump down to the HSL sliders here. So we're already getting somewhere. Let's do some masking to really pull this image together. Adjust the crop there. I'm gonna add a little bit of a brush mask in the middle here just to highlight the trail. And then I'm gonna add a radial gradient to kind of bring a little bit of warmth and brightness to the center of the image around where that seat is. So it kind of makes you like think to yourself, hey, I would love to be in that seat. That looks like a nice seat. <laughs> you know? And then I'm gonna bring up the contrast just a little bit more as well. Darken kind of this side of the image. So that way it kind of makes your Eyes first wander towards the center there. I'm gonna add a little and it's almost like adding a little vignette, but 
it feels a little bit more intentional. That's about it. Look at the detail there. That's awesome. Here is one more photo that I kind of want to just show the difference in the color information here and just how big of a difference that makes. And you can just see when zooming into the reds here and switching that to the greens and then switching to the orange, like there's just so much information in this one photo. You can kind of see it in most of these photos here. This was a larger landscape where the there wasn't a ton of red in this scene because it's a little bit past peak foliage in the scene. But you still, when zooming into these to the trees here, there's just so much difference in color variations. And it doesn't look muddy at all. They're still incredibly sharp. The details there, and you also, like if I went down to the HSL slider down here, I could, it would be really easy to manipulate these colors in any way, make them maybe a different, and pull out some of those reds a little bit more. And you know, easily it could become early fall in the matter of seconds, but that's questionably eth <laughs> it's ethically questionable. The fact that you have the ability to make so many individual controls because of all of that color information just gives you a whole lot of freedom in post. Just individually looking at these reds, you can push them so it almost looks like early fall if I were to kind of make them more saturated and bring out the greens just slightly. And that variation between the bright yellows and the greens and the deep reds, I mean, the fall, in my opinion, is the perfect example of why 16-bit color can make such a huge difference in one, editing, and two, in the field taking these photos. This scene also had a very, very bright background because we were shooting towards the sun. And in the past, this wasn't even an option. You would have to either bracket, put your thumb in front of the sun to kind of take a, an exposure with your thumb in front of the sun and you just get the burst and whatnot, or things like that. Or, you know, you would have to do a whole bunch of stuff to shoot into the sun or you wouldn't be able to do it at all. But the fact that we can do that because of all this information here, um, just grants so much freedom and just taking one single exposure and still being able to bring up the shadows and bring down the highlights and recover all the detail in the sky there, which by the way, was such an epic sunset here. But all that to say, 16-bit color can be a great tool for fine art photographers, landscape photographers, or portrait photographers who just want more information and flexibility out of their files. If you really want to play with your pictures in post more so, you'll be able to do it because you have all of that information. But I'm curious to hear from you. What do you think of 16-bit color? Is it something that you would like to incorporate into your photography? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt, and I'll see you next time.